Welcome everyone, it's Andrea here from Admire PR and today I am joined by Chris Simmons from Blackstar and we are going to talk about communications in 2022, um, which is where we are right now. And I have a feeling that comms have never been more important for businesses. Um, we are all in a bit of a flux about where we're working, what's going on. So I just want Chris to you know, educate us about what we need to think about as business owners. You've got to educate us, Chris. Welcome. Oh, thanks for having me, Andrew. I should get my waterboard on straight away yeah, and uh, get that. to the front of the class. Yeah, yeah sounds like right. a plan. I completely agree. Hybrid and all of this new change that we're doing, comms is more important than ever right now. Because at the heart of it, all of the people and points mean prizes here. So we have to make sure the comms are right for our people. But yeah. what do we think, though, about changing from going office to going hybrid? Now, I know you've already made the change in some ways. Yeah. Do you think that this is a good thing or a bad thing? I think you have to treat everyone who works for you as an individual. And for some people, it's a very good thing. And for some people, it doesn't suit them. And as an employer and a business owner, you need to provide what that your individual staff need. Um, and that's what I think. So I think these like we see some companies making broad statements across the whole business. And they're like, oh, we're not having any offices or everyone's got to be in the office. Like, actually, no, this is this is an opportunity now to help everyone who works for us work the best way they can. So that's that's my feeling anyway. I think you kind of cracked it because back in the start of everything, even before COVID was actually a thing, we in the communications industry were trying to push the idea across to people that you could be as productive anywhere in the world as you are in the office. You do not have to be in one strict location. You could be at home, you could be on the moon, you could be on a sun lounger in the middle of the Caribbean. It doesn't matter, you can be as effective everywhere. And then obviously the pandemic hit and companies very quickly needed to change. And all of a sudden, everything that we've been trying to hammer into them over the last kind of 18, 24 months, because they've now stumbled on this themselves, then I think it's a fantastic idea. Why didn't I think of this before? And I've got to roll this out. <laughs> As such, all the media outlets are saying hybrid working is wonderful. Hybrid working is fantastic. Everyone jumps on the bandwagon. And from Forbes to you know the Huffington Post to LinkedIn, everyone is saying hybrid working is the way to go. Now, I knew I was coming on today. and I was a little bit nervous. So I thought I'll do some homework. And I was surprised to find that the subject of a lot of these articles now from those same publishers is, is hybrid working as good as it's cracked up to be? Mm. Is it actually the answer? And a lot of it comes down to, as you say, people are individuals. And whereas you will take what your company tells you to do at face value for, you know, a short term, mm. oh, well, we've got to make ends meet for now, or, you know, it's only a short term fix, things are going to get back to normal soon. But after 18 months, two years of this, people are starting to get a little bit cheesed off and things are starting to creep out of the woodwork now that maybe people didn't think about before. One point that's come up time and time and time again is if you're out of sight, are you out of mind? Yeah. How does a good leader make sure that all their team are still involved in the company culture, are still experiencing the same sort of channels of communication that everyone else, even the office-based team are experiencing. Mm. And a lot of the feedback is, well, if I'm not in the office, my work doesn't get recognized. I don't get rewarded. Nobody talks to me. It's lonely. I don't get promoted. And there's a lot of challenges now mm -hmm. these days with what exactly you need to put in place to enable hybrid working. Now, I know you've only a small team, but I imagine that through your channels, you've experienced this quite a lot with your base. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, I've got my staff, like they're mainly quite young um, and um, it's been such an upheaval and there's been, a, and also um, a lot of them are working from shared 
um, accommodation as well, working, they haven't got their own office set up, they haven't got their own. And it's, um, and you know, it's, it's, it does feel quite lonely for them. So, you know, things like we have um, work chats and yep. are you actually really okay chats? Like we have them set, yes. you know, so we, so it's that kind of like, you know, tell me the truth now kind of chats. Um, and we, but we separate those out from the work things. And it's as a leader, I think you have to, I and mean, I've spoken to other people, um, other company founders who've found this as well, is that you're becoming um more of a you know you have to come more of a look after of your team even more yeah. so it's yes because people can um especially if they're kind of you know quite introverted and they um it's very easy for them then just to slip off that you know and they're they're sitting on the you know video call and you don't you can't always tell if they're actually okay um so there's more there's more care um that has to be put in i think it's it's a it's more of a job um that side yeah. of the leading now yeah so whereas in the past if you were in the office you could see the look on someone's face you know you have your water cooler moments don't you you mm. kind of your five minute pauses whenever it's real easy just from being around someone to get a feel for their energy their emotion where they're at right now but when you're remote you have to force yourself I don't know, daily, weekly, twice daily, whatever, just to engage with that person and say, hey, like you said, have a real chat, not just a worky chat. Yeah, yeah. But then does that mean, because a lot of people have said that this aspect of working is now becoming quite lonely. And I know for a lot of people, the difference between your teammate or your fellow colleague and a friend kind of really does blur about now. And you kind of have to be surrogate friend set in some ways, just to make sure that your chaps and chapettes yeah. aren't burning themselves out or going crazy because there's the FOMO aspect as well. You're yeah. not being in the office, you're not being around everyone. What's going on that I'm not part of? What am I missing out on? And I, I'm guilty as the next person. When this little bad boy goes off, yeah. ping, ping, ping. If it's my personal, I don't even look at it, but it's my work phone. Ooh. every whatsapp message every facebook this every email i am right there what do they need me for how do i get involved i really have to calm that down but at mm. the same time how else do people engage with you what's your preferred tool yeah it's um there's there's a couple of things there one is um not taking as many breaks i'm guilty of that at sure. home um I, I just work through um, and that's not healthy. And I make sure that everybody else has breaks, even if I'm not doing as I say, um, that's, that's one thing. Um, the other thing I always say to, you know, if I choose to um, work at odd times, I wouldn't expect any of my team to do that. And they're very, you know, that's, that's set very clearly, like you don't need to look at this stuff. You know, it really, um, and I try and protect, you know, messages, you know, I try and be a bit um, yeah. careful when messages go out, you can schedule stuff, you know, like just to make sure you're just being aware that people have, um, you know, a, another life and they need to be able to switch off. And even if it's th as, as simple as you have like a little ritual, if you're at home about, you know, putting stuff away at the end of the day, because yeah. um, cool. I'm, I'm at the moment we're in my um you know lou is actually here working while i'm talking to you we're on my um table in my in my lounge um yep. and so then i have a thing where I, I shut everything away at the end of the day and i think that's quite important as well that people think about that and also um you know there's there's it's going to be interesting how um how much starts to creep into the news over the year of um whether people are sitting correctly at home and their health sort of posture and that oh. kind of thing because that's starting to to come you know that's starting to come in as well now it's like actually we're responsible for the people who work for us um and i think there's going to be a lot of you know there's a lot to learn in this situation um I couldn't agree with you more. Mm -hmm. How long do you think it's going to be before employees start asking employers for contributions towards their energy bills? Now, that is something I have seen um, 
already in the news and um yeah i mean it's it's going to be a fa- it's going to be a factor it's going to be a factor especially come out april um yeah one of the big benefits of hybrid working let's not forget is a employer no longer needs a residence a, a business a place mm. for them to be if you're all working from home and that's the new norm well, you've saved a packet on rates, saved a packet on utilities. Mm. You don't even have to buy the tea and coffee anymore. Everyone buys their own these days. Yeah. So how long is it going to be before you need to give back to your employees? Yeah. With these forecasted energy rises that are going to come this year, I mean, there are horror stories, 50% increase, 100% mm. increase. Who knows where it's going to end up? I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of home workers push back and ask yeah. for a contribution towards their phone bill, their electric bill, you know, whatever, their heating bill. Mm. I think that's just around the corner. Yeah. And it wouldn't surprise me that within six months, policies have to be put in place for remote workers to have, I guess, even more rights, because this will no longer be a stopgap thing. This will be coded into that company's culture. We are a hybrid working business, like Mm. Microsoft is now, like Apple is now, like British Airways, BP, 10 other different companies that you could name. Mm. You're going to follow suit, but you also need to make sure your policies are strong to protect your people. Yeah, it's um, it's going to be a fascinating year, definitely, from that that point of view, because you're right. It's um, until now, it's been a uh, temporary and yeah. everybody's, you know, been and we're, you know, as Brits, we're quite good at kind of like, you know, knuckling down together when st- yeah. stuff gets tough and now it's like oh hang on a minute it's it's you can feel it since new year actually you can feel it yes. that people are like oh it's this is this is the thing now this is where we are um and um it's going to be a very interesting time to be working in hr i would um imagine this year it's going to be fascinating yeah yeah and you think to yourself that hybrid working must mean less work for hr because i my guilty pleasures, you know, you, you often get a little bit of office drama. I can't help but kind of sit back and have a chuckle. You can't help it. But it only happens when everyone's in there together. You get some like old school family run business where everyone leads with their egos and things. And it can be really whoo, gung ho on days, you know, <laughs> sit back, buckle up. This is going to be exciting. And where's all that gone? Yeah, you know, that, there you go. I, as dramatic as it is and as oh, oh my gosh as it is it's also entertaining and engaging and kind of makes you glad you turned up that day as harsh <laughs> as it sounds but what's the alternative you're stuck at home maybe, maybe your cat's there yeah Stroke you know cat. cats can be trouble though cats can be trouble so i'm told <laughs> i've heard the same yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's a thing i mean we all this interpersonal interaction you know and, and the fact that we are we're social animals at the end of the day. Mm. Human we, although we may feel like we don't recharge in, in company, we need to recharge on depending on what kind of personality we are. You can't get away from the fact that we are designed to be together. We're designed yeah. to be in communities, whether that is a work community, a home working community, whatever it may be. The pressure then to be on, to reach out to people, to raise your hands. In the office, it's so easy because they're right there and you've known them forever and you know, they're, they're as close to a friend as you're going to get. When it's remote, that distance just seems even further. And you yeah. think, oh, do I really want to bother them with my trivial little problem? Even though you're maybe underselling yourself, it may be a real thing. You know, loneliness is not trivial. Yeah. Feeling depressed is not trivial. If you need to reach out, you have to. And a skilled leader and a skilled manager is going to push that out as a culture. Every day I'm going to reach out to you. That still has to happen in my mind. You can't yeah, substitute that water cola, but maybe something could happen, some bridging measure, maybe an all hand Zoom or something. I don't know. What, what's the next thing? What could it be? Well, yeah, it's, um, I know, I think, I think there's um, I, something I've been thinking about actually is, is the meetings that we have as teams yes. um, and um, what extra ones are going to be needed? What else do we need? Um, yeah. And I'm not sure, I haven't come up with a, with a solution for this yet. Maybe people watching this will be able to comment and, you know, let us know what they think. What are the next, what are those next meetings we're going to need? What are those extra things? Um, I think people got quite fed up of um, doing sort of Zoom socials at the start of the pandemic and that kind of thing. 
but actually now we haven't done so many for a while things like that like what can kind we of do wants to come back doesn't yeah, it? yeah. It needs to come. some of that needs to come back a little bit um i found i found a marketing game actually for my team to do it's quite yeah exciting yeah. <laughs> so um yeah so it's it's finding things yeah other other things um and yeah that definitely needs to that definitely needs to happen and um i'd be interested to yeah to hear what other people think about that definitely. do you think that I, I think well this is only my opinion but i'm yeah. sure you you might share this too the company culture now seems to be what is going to dictate a success of a company or not mm -hmm. because you're forcing so many changes on people at short notice and these are big fundamental changes if you have a strong company culture going into those changes, I think you're going to be OK. Mm. I think you're going to ride the waves here. If your company culture wasn't quite where you wanted it to be and then you push all these changes on, I think it's going to be even harder for you to kind of rise up after this. Yeah. So those little tools, those all hand zooms, those water cooler moments, mm. bringing those back. I think it's key, really, because culture is just so important right now. I think that's what's mm. keeping people going. Yeah. I know. The Black Star culture has been ramped up, has been strengthened, and the effort behind it is significant now to make sure that everyone feels like they're involved. Mm. And I would suggest that everyone needs to be going down that route if they're not already. But what tools can we use? And I, I'm I'm going to be going out to the uh, the Google after this and finding out for myself. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a watch this space, isn't it, for for that one um and yeah there's going to be there'll be you know tech wise there's going to be a lot of new new apps under development ah. at the moment and things coming out that will um you know there's a lot of us use slack for various things at the moment we we use um with our team we actually use just you know whatsapp chats um because we just find that easy everybody's on it so i find that they're more um so that that just seems to be easier but there's going to be new things coming out all the time that would be worth um worth ch testing you know professionally i've got peer groups i'm on guild for some pr peer groups um and um slack for some other ones you know and they're, they're all good because they they do have a bit of a social chat as well and it just shows how much you need that um that facility yeah. for like a social chat as well as a oh do you you know can you recommend this or you know or something more more work orientated so um yeah there's going to be a lot of a uh, lot of p new new things coming out very quickly um I'd yes we, yeah. we, we've seen this already i mean the tech mm -hmm. as i said right at the start has been around way before covid was even a thing I mean, I'm more these days thinking about what I use my tech for because I know what the solutions are being in this industry. Mm. I mean, we, we're asked to keep abreast of these all the time. Advances in Zoom, advances in Microsoft Teams, mm. all of the VoIP solutions that a professional comms platform offers now include a chat function, a video room that is your own personal meeting room that you can drag people into and quickly catch up with them. All of these things come now as standard. Mm. Even though back in the day it would have been a very separate thing to have a telephone that also does video, now it's yeah. pretty much joined at the hip. You can't get yeah. away from it. Unified communications is the standard. If you're not on a unified communications platform, you kind of need to be asking questions of your tech guys because you should be there by now. And it includes all of this integrations with Slack as well. That's coming. Mm. Uh, Asana which is kind of the other similar thing for, for yeah. tracking across teams in multiple locations. That is now being worked out, being integrated. CRM platforms are being absorbed into comms platforms, so it's a seamless experience. I mean, we've got all the tools there. We've yeah. got ways of working. It really, I think, is down to the people element now to make all of that marry up nicely and sweetly and work. Yeah. I mean, before COVID, the hoo-ha was chatbots. You know, I might even talk into a real person half the time. Yeah. I think that argument has long since been settled. That's been chucked out the window yeah. now. Can I get my answer in 30 seconds? Yes. Well, then I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Just give me my answer. Yeah. I mean, things like that got parked and chucked because something else came yeah. and it was hybrid working all the way. And that's where we're at now, unified comms in this environment. We've got the tools. Have we got the mentality? Have we got the mindset? Mm. That's the question I need to answer next. 
Yeah, well, there you go. That's a brilliant place to leave it, Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time today. Pleasure. Thanks for having me.